Hi everybody, Omar Kazarski, Creative Director of Bauer Web Solutions. You can visit us online at www.bauerwebsolutions.com. And today I was going to show you a quick technique here in Adobe Illustrator to create a really quick but still very nice and effective kind of 3D concave effect. I'm going to be showing you in on a Macintosh, but uh, the same process would be the same for the PC. And I happen to be using Illustrator, but you can apply these same concepts to Photoshop or your favorite uh, graphic program. So the first thing we're going to need to do here is uh, create a new document. And since this is Illustrator, I'm not so concerned about uh, resolution since it is resolution independent and vector based. But uh, if you were using Photoshop you would use a, a document size suitable to your purposes. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a circle here. Um, and obviously I'm going to hold down the shift key as I do that, but a little trick, if I hold down my option key on the Mac or the alt key on the PC it will allow me to draw a circle from the center out versus not holding the alt or the option key down it goes from corner to corner so if I hold down the shift key it's going to constrain my movement and make a perfect circle so therefore if I combine those two keys if I hold down both the option key and the shift key on the Mac as I am here or the alt and the shift key simultaneously if I was working on the PC it allows me to create a perfect circle from the center out Okay, so right now I have a circle that's filled with white and stroked with black, as you can see here in my toolbox. I'm zooming into. I'm going to change the stroke to none, and I'm going to change the fill by clicking on the fill indicator, bring that to the front. I'm going to fill it with a gradient. So if I go to my window here, I'll go to my gradient and I will just fill it. I'll click on the little gradient swatch and fill it with that color to start with and perhaps you know, instead of going from black to white maybe we'll just jazz it up a little bit I'll click on the white indicator then go to my color window you can see here how it's telling me I'm changing this color gradient stop so I'll change the mode here to I'll say this is I'm doing it just for the screen RGB and I'll give myself kind of a, a red color there. Okay, that's pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the direction of that gradient. Now I could rotate the whole object, or I could use the gradient vector tool to change the direction. It's really six of one, half dozen of another. So here within my Illustrator toolbox is the tool I'm looking for. This one here is the gradient tool. So if I take the gradient tool and I start to drag from one location, say at the top of the object, straight down, and I'm holding down my shift key just to constrain my movement so it goes straight down, I'll let it go someplace towards the bottom. You can see here how my gradient consists of red and then it gradually fades to black here. And maybe I'll just change that a little bit, Make it, extend the gradient just a little bit here. Okay, so I have my, my first object here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch tools to my black selection tool here in Illustrator. This is the first tool, the selection tool, just so I can select that whole object. You know, I'll just kind of center it here just for visual purposes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an exact copy of that. So I'm going to say Edit and Copy. Now if I were to say Edit and Paste, it's going to paste it right in the center of my screen, not necessarily right on top of the original one. So let me undo that. Edit, undo. So what I want to do is I click on the object to select it, and I say edit and copy. But this time, I'm going to say edit and paste in front. So whatever is currently selected, whatever I currently have copied, will be pasted directly on top of that as far as its positioning. So once you do that it's going to look like nothing happened when in actuality as you can see as I move this out of the way I actually have two of the objects directly on top of each other so let me just undo that so I want to make this circle the one I just pasted that's directly on top of the original one slightly smaller than the original now I could use the um, 
the resize tool but here in Illustrator I'm going to use the free transform tool and I want to uh, size it in proportion I want to keep the width and height the same proportion but I also want to do it from the center inward so I'm going to position my mouse over one of the four corners here I'll start to drag and I'm going to hold down my option key here on the Mac or the alt key on the PC to have it go from the center out at the same time as I hold down the shift key to make sure that I keep my width and height the same so I'm using the free transformation tool sizing it down from its center by holding down option and shift simultaneously as I click and drag with my mouse that's the keyboard combination for the Mac on the PC it would be alt shift once I get it to the size that I want I'm going to make sure I let go of my mouse first then my keyboard otherwise if you do it in the reverse order there's a chance that it might you know get out of proportion alright I'll switch back to my black selection tool now what I want to do to complete this effect is really just use the same exact gradient the same colors that are used for the first one but just change the direction again I could just rotate this thing or I can use the gradient tool and instead of going from top to bottom I'll go from bottom to top okay and I'll just deselect it so you can see it so here you go you have a kind of three-dimensional button so it kind of looks like the the outer edge is raised and then the inner um, middle portion is kind of recessed or concave like a button that you can press so I could I could use this for a variety of purposes I can use it for uh, you know a call out for a print campaign or a uh, poster I can use it for web buttons you can you know put text on top of that you know maybe white text with a little drop shadow whatever you want uh, an emboss effect it's just an idea and you can also take this and you know use the the same concept perhaps with a uh, with a rectangle and rectangles and ovals work best with this kind of effect so it's really just a kind of quick down and dirty um, thing that you can use all right so I hope that uh, helps you and if you have any graphic design questions or web design questions or you need help with a project whether it be actually creating the graphic elements for you or perhaps uh, training we can certainly provide that to you just uh, contact us at our website BauerWebSolutions.com. thanks a lot